Okay. All right, we are live now here in our Facebook group, Move Fully Nourished. Want to welcome a very special guest to our Move Fully Nourished team today. We've got Dr. Connor LaValle of Greater Good Chiropractic Care. Uh, I have worked with Connor for over a year now myself and have referred many clients to see him because he's just one of a kind and in his specialty, he can explain a little bit more about what he does. But our topic today is going to be talking really about chiropractic health, health from a neurological perspective, the science, the philosophy, the art, and how the heck this relates to nutrition. So thank you so much for joining today, Dr. Connor. Absolutely, Ashley. Thank you so much for asking me and having me here. Uh, you've just been such a phenomenal inspiration too with your group here, just constantly getting content out here to allow people to be empowered to change the direction of their health, which is our number one asset in life. And I think a lot of people, uh, including myself sometimes, we can forget about that, you know, but to come back and to have a like-minded scenario to where we can educate and empower people, um, it's phenomenal. So thank you for letting me be a part of that, Ashley. Of course. Thank you. So tell us a little bit, Dr. Connor, about really what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of before we get into our topic yep. today, because I know we've got some great uh, topics we're going to cover, but tell us a little bit about what your day in and day out uh, looks like when you're working with your patients. Excellent question, too. And there's a lot of different uh, modalities and views when it comes to chiropractic care and what it means to actually achieve health and correction from our perspective. I want to talk a little bit about what we do in the office and how it relates to everyone's nervous system and their health. You heard that word. It's the N-word, nervous system, right? And we know that that's a really critical organ in our system because it governs and controls every function in our body. So the reason why the spine is so critical is because we know it's an extension of the brains. So each time that we adjust the spine, we're actually affecting the brain. And that's what I tell people on their first initial visit. So... We know that the autonomic nervous system, it's, it's a phenomenal thing that God, the universe, whatever you believe within you, has provided us. And that's got two specific parts. One of them is the parasympathetic nervous system, which is that rest and digest, that reproductive, that calming system that allows us to heal and be well. And the opposite end of that spectrum is the sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight mode. There's a lot of research going on that says people who are more masculine or men are more fight or flight and women are more tend and befriend. But either way, if you're feminine or you're, or you're a woman or you're a man, it doesn't really matter. It's that system that allows us to get away from an immediate threat, but it doesn't allow us to repair. And in the 21st century, this is really becoming critical because being in that sympathetic mode, we're not adapting to our environment as well. And we're all living in that fight or flight mode on a continual basis. So if I look at it from a fundamental perspective, when it comes to chiropractic, I always say the number one thing that we're battling against is chronic stress. Getting out of that chronic sympathetic state, that aspect of the autonomic nervous system and trying to balance things so that we can function the way that we were designed to, which was to reproduce the number one reason we've evolved is to go through and procreate in our species. One of the other reasons, and we're going to get to this in a little bit actually, about reproduction and when it comes to fertility issues, is that it's been a huge hot topic today, especially in medicine and healthcare. The reason why we're having such problems in procreating and these fundamental things that we think should take place just naturally is because we're in such a chronic state. We're in such a chronically stressed state, and we're not being able to get out of that and adapt and balance the part of the autonomic, autonomic nervous system. But what we want to do is be able to balance the system, first and foremost. So chiropractic here should be about analyzing the spine in terms of a functional standpoint, not just the structure, which is a direct reflection of the brain, but how is it moving and how is it adapting? Mm -hmm. So I can go into that a little bit more, but does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, very, very well said. So how we're going to then tie this also into being related to nutrition here is when you start talking a little bit more about alignment and really why it's important to make sure that your spine is in alignment, how that impacts the trans, uh, transition of nutrients throughout your body and transference yes. between cells, organs, tissues, um, mitochondria, the energy house, powerhouse yourself. So all of that is going to be crucial and very, very important when we're talking about making sure that the alignment is there because uh, I always talk about how you have 60 liters of blood that is pumped throughout your 
your body every single hour. And if that blood is not able to get to the spaces it needs to go, or, or it's uh, full of gunk and junk, then either way, we're not getting to that optimizing uh, space where we can really get to the, the highest level of function for our bodies. So go into a little bit more, tell us, um, Dr. Connor, about the traumas and toxins and uh, the other topic when we wanted to talk about this first um, topic that we have on deck here. Beautifully said, Ashley, and that's so critical to understand. Everything that I'm going to talk about today is going to be related to the chiropractic adjustment and what that means. Ashley is so phenomenal at correcting biochemical imbalances that relate to a lot of the topics that I'm going to go over. But from a structural, neurological, functional perspective is what I'm going to zero in on right now. So, so glad you asked that, Ashley. Um, the, the coolest thing to think about, anytime we make a adjustment or we go to a specific area, what I think about is my mentor, who is Dr. Vern Pierce. And he was one of the giants in our profession that made it an absolute point to stay up with the latest technology in our profession. So we can analyze the motion of the spine, which then tells us how are you adapting, how are you changing, and how are you able to take in those signals from your environment and make them work for you and that's the same thing that nutrition does. But let me kind of back up here. So thoughts, traumas, toxins, and physical distortions are some of the main issues that bring about problems in the spine. And the way that I look at that, if you guys can think about it, this is a really unique term, but it's called subluxation, which is a minor dislocation in the spine that causes a neurological imbalance. The same thing happens when you're having chronic stress in the GI system it creates distortion and a lockdown of that fight or flight mode that stops your body from adapting and functioning the way that it was intended to. So what we do fundamentally is link up the electrical system, which is your nervous system, to the chemical messenger, which is your hormone system. What's so interesting is that your hormones are governing, controlling your behaviors and the way that you feel. So I always talk about in my practice, I don't really care as much about how you feel is as much as about how you function because feeling follows function. So the hypothalamus, we've all heard of that, right? It's the massive part of the brain that allows us to maintain homeostasis, maintain balance and regulate itself. The problem with that is that it's kind of mechanistic. It's static. It's almost like a balance beam if we're affecting the hypothalamus. What the brain really is all about is creating a balance of neurotransmitters as well as hormones within the brain. And by locating specifically where those distortions are in the spine, allowing the spine to move again properly, you're affecting the hormones in the blood. What are those hormones that are constantly within that fight or flight mode of the sympathetic nervous system? It's adrenaline and Endocrine, cortisol. Right? Cortisol, epinephrine, yep. yes. I heard you talk about that too, Ashley, on some of your, your webinars. I got really excited when you asked me to come on because I wanted to kind of add a little layer to that. We see people come into our office who are constantly, you know, shut down. They're, they're in this constant, like, forward motion. Some of that's being on their computer all day long or looking down at their phone mm -hmm. or having those rounded shoulders, which then changes the structure of their spine. And your, your posture and your spine is a direct reflection of what your brain is doing. But here's what's so cool. When cortisol and adrenaline are chronically elevated, we know that there is a disease state that's setting in. And one of the things we can do is balance the hypothalamus, but not just by doing it from a static standpoint, by correcting it on a hormonal level. So the ends of your neurons, again, the brain we're affecting every time we make a specific adjustment, they're not just sending chemical messages here and there in their electrical signals. They're literally transferring information that tells your brain to balance itself when it's necessary. And it's dictating your behavior. Mm -hmm. So... When you're Connor, stuck, I always talk about, sorry to interrupt you, I always talk about with yeah. my clients, like your thoughts become your hormones, your hormones, then listen in. They're like, they're like eavesdropping on your thoughts. And what you just said is yep. so clearly put and creating that symbolism there is it matters. The, the amount of stress that we have in our body, it makes a difference. The um, amount of times we meditate and we relax and we focus on deep breathing activities because it's going to change the hormonal communication between the brain and the body. That's, a, that's absolutely spot on. And that's why I think it, it, it's really helpful to kind of pay attention. I, I would say these three different things are what you should focus on when it comes 
to your health from a fundamental standpoint without adding anything in. And what do I mean by adding anything in? The standard of care is usually adding medication in order to mitigate a symptom or a surgery in order to take back a situation in your body that's been going on for several decades and try to bring it back to center. But it's all about trying to stop what is causing the issue to which you came in with rather than correcting the true cause of the problem. And that nutrition does the same thing. So when you're stuck, you're in a hyper adrenaline release response and cortisol and adrenaline are constantly intermixed and tied. So when you talk about stress, it's the kickoff for most disease. So what I like to think about, Ashley, you've probably heard of this before, but the technical term is allostatic load. And, and let me kind of frame this. So all of us are juggling all these different things that we got to maintain, maintain balance on. So if we have our kids are, are having you know, problems in school, uh, we have a bad relationship, we're not communicating with our spouse as well. Um, you know, our car died this morning. We got to call the, the repair guy before we go off to work. All these things are creating extra stress on top of what we've already had a baseline of just being human. It's hard to be human, especially in 2020, right? So it's, it's fundamental when we think of, hey, what's causing the issues that's not allowing the body to heal and adapt? We can go after those. When all those things start to happen, it's like juggling 17 tennis balls. If I think of all those things that are causing us stress. What happens if I throw you that last tennis ball, that 18th? The thing is, you don't drop that last tennis ball. You drop everything. And that's when disease and illness sets in, when you can't handle the stress load anymore. One of the main aspects of that cause that stress load to go over the edge, which is your allostatic load from a scientific standpoint, is being subluxated. And again, that's that interesting word that I brought up before. So there was minor misalignments in the spine, stopping that nerve impulse from getting to that specific organ or that specific muscle or getting to the brain and stopping it from adapting the way that it's supposed to. And that's a real fundamental aspect of health. What we do is pay specific attention to how the spine is not just looking from a structural standpoint, but how is it moving? That's telling me how is your stress response able to be affected when those extra things come about? And that's your real relationship to illness and disease. Because at the same time, neurological interference is setting itself into your system and you're chronically stressed and, and hyper on, on call, if you will, for all those extra things I just mentioned, mm -hmm. you're in a place of non-adaptation. So we want to make sure to pinpoint and correct those issues. We take yeah. it from an objective standpoint. And what I think is so important and crucial to point out here too is how different you are uh, in terms of chiropractors and in the practice and what you preach and and the methodology that you use when you are practicing and, and helping people because I myself had seen three other chiropractors before I came to see you and every other person was just making simple same thing same adjustments where it'd be like do, do, you know, and you're done. It's the same for everybody. Whereas you're talking about measuring, assessing, viewing the progress, looking before, looking after, and to really make sure that the changes that you're, you're making are producing results. Yes. So that's interesting too. One of the things I talked about was Dr. Vern Pierce, who I learned from. His biggest thing was standing up with the latest technology. And he always said that chiropractors should be, if we're striving to move the profession forward, and make sure that we're doing what we say we're doing, we should be on the same level as neurosurgeons. Because if you're affecting the spine and correcting without adding anything, which would be like a scalpel or adding a medication, we're literally changing that impulse to the brain and how you're behaving as a result. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that. We take out the guesswork, just like Ashley said, by anyone who comes in, I wanna communicate why I'm gonna do it, what we're gonna do and what you should expect. And that's where the technology comes in. We'll share screens if we're capable of doing that in a moment. Is that cool, Ashley? I, I will, I'll work on that while you're talking. If not, no big deal, I'll just describe it, okay? So short-term stress is good. Long-term, the release will literally kill you over time. And that's because it's constantly eroding your ability to adapt. So there's two things, when you're chronically stressed, what happens? All your blood rushes to your muscles, to your heart, to your brain. And when we're in this chronically stressed state, especially in 2020, 2021, 21st century, constantly having all these, these demands upon us, especially these young moms are probably some of the major 
demographic that we see on a regular basis of all these things. It's almost like a superhuman uh, demand on your time and your energy. Being in that chronically stressed state is going to take all that blood from your muscles, your heart, and your brain. It's going to and it's going to keep it there. And instead, what well, we should have that blood be able to disperse because we only have so much in our body. That blood should be going to your reproductive organs. It should be going to your digestive system and to your immune system. So when that blood is shuttled away to your muscles because you're stressed out, you're not getting that, that proper healing fluid to allow your body to adapt. So it's funny, in our practice, we see a ton of women who can't have children and they got uh, infertility issues. And the average woman will, and, and the actually act, act, every couple will spend $100,000 in in vitro fertilization um, protocols in order to get, just to have a child, which is something that should be so natural. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we're connecting their nervous system to that part of the uterus that allows things to start to work properly, but we're down-regulating that adrenaline and cortisol response in so many of these cases. So adaptation is critical and taking blood from where it doesn't belong and putting it to where it does belong. And that's that balance of the autonomic nervous system. Does that make sense, Ashley? Am yeah, I saying that? Yeah, okay. perfectly. Very, very well said. And awesome. actually really relatable. I have some uh, definitely people in this group who that will resonate very, very clearly with. So it's a kind of a, right? It's a, it's a shuttling from, hey, oh my God, I got 10,000 things to do today. I got to take off my to-do list. I got to go drop this thing off at the, at the bank, at the mail. And somebody's always trying to gain your attention. You're taking that blood flow from your uterus, from your digestive system, which is where your immune system is. Mm -hmm. You're stopping those natural processes, keeping you away from handling pathogenic viruses and bacteria and you're putting it towards these parts of your body that are designed to be a good thing to run from the tiger or run from the, the uh, you know, threat that's immediately in front of you. That's a good thing. But when it's chronically elevated, which is what a lot of us are experiencing, that's when the real disease kicks in. Mm -hmm. And whenever we look at the spine, there's two ways in which it can create a, a real problem. And that's a physical distortion. And actually, you asked me about this time of year, a lot of people will come into our office after shoveling the driveway and all of a sudden they throw their back out and they're like oh man you know all i did was you know pick up this last you know pile of snow and to get my car out here so we can all be safe and i'm always thinking to myself this has been building up over and over and over time because of those chronic stressors that have set in and that's that allostatic load it was that last tennis ball that i threw you that you stopped and you've and it dropped and everything tends to fall apart and that's a physical distortion. The chemical distortion from having problems in your spine create long-term inflammation, which those two aspects of disease, chronic disease, which is a major problem in our country are inflammation and stress. And those are really tied hand in hand. So it's not just physical and structural. People come to us all the time, say, I got back pain, I got neck pain, I got headaches. I always tell them that's the most fundamental issues that we deal with. It's, it's rather easy to correct those, but I'm not even focused on that. We're focused on correcting your stress response because as a natural result, those things will get better by correcting the function of your spine. And Ashley, if you've been a patient in our office, it's easy to understand that, but you can kind of see when we're being that specific and objective with our corrections and allowing those specific nerves to heal and go to the places that they were designed, everything is a chance getting better without needing to add anything to it, like a scalpel, like medication. Right. There's time and place for those things, but it's not the first group of problems. Right, the more we can get rid of that and the more we can just natu naturally let the body heal and like you said, do what it's naturally intended to do, the better off we'll be without having to, because a lot of medications will wreak havoc on the gut. So if we can get you in a place where you don't have to uh, use any of those medications or you don't have to consistently use them for the rest of your life, we're putting your body in a state of uh, heightened immune system because then you're not being compromised. Your gut isn't being compromised um, in other ways too. I was able, Connor, to uh, do a screen share. So on the bottom, if you go when you need it, there's a little button that says just the screen share spot. You can do Oh, it. beautiful. Awesome. Super easy, Ashley. I'll go to that in a moment here. And I'm just going to comment on what you just said, okay? Yeah, perfect. Because uh, it's, it's huge, too. Um, there's two hormones I want to talk about. And when I talked about before, I mentioned the reason we adjust the spine or correct the spine for proper motion. I'll leave it with three points here. Proper motion of the spine brings 90% of nutrition to the brain. 
when we think of nutrition from a neurological perspective, we're talking about two things, blood flow and cerebrospinal fluid. Those two fluids are what bathes the brain in the natural fundamental nutrition it needs to function the way it was optimally designed. So whenever we see a subluxation or misalignment, we want to pinpoint it, correct it, and allow the body to do what it was designed, as I said. The other thing about the subluxation is we know that the stress response can be overactive, and that is going to lead to even more issues that cause problems. Let's share the screen here soon. Um, there's, before I'm doing that, there's two hormones. So the hippocampus is something that's involved in learning and memory. We see a lot of children in our office with ADHD, learning difficulties, even us as parents, us as young professionals. The hippocampus is a really interesting part in the spine and in the brain because it's responsible for learning and memory. So if you've ever been chronically stressed, it shuts down the frontal lobe in the brain and stops you from remembering what you needed to do that day. So if you've ever been driving home from work and remember that your spouse told you to pick up the groceries or to do the, uh, you know, put some salt on the driveway to down the ice that you forgot to shovel, whatever it is. I'm not saying that that's what's going on in my life, but that's a problem. <laughs> that's yeah, your maybe. hippocampus. It's something, it's chronically stressed. So when your cortisol is getting released because you're chronically stressed, it literally damages the hippocampus and stops learning and memory from being able to, to set in. So downregulating that stress response is critical to not only maintain a proper relationship, but then also to remember and to record and to learn. And children with ADHD are in a chronically stressed sympathetic state and they're not able to adapt because that, that hippocampus is getting damaged from chronic cortisol release. The same thing is true for dopamine. What is that? That's a hormone, that's a neurotransmitter, it's what our electrical system of our nervous system is attached to by allowing that chemical messenger to do what it was designed in terms of the behavior. I keep coming back to that because it's critical. So dopamine allows us to feel good. It allows us to know that we're doing a good job in life. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal hormone. When it's down regulated, a lot of us feel terrible. We don't feel good. We don't, we don't know why. And the big problem with not having enough dopamine is because cortisol when it's chronically elevated, it actually damages the receptors that allow dopamine to do what it was designed to do. So depression can set in. Um, other issues relating to psychotropic problems and mental health, it, it's critical and, and, it, and it matters. And it's all tied to chronic cortisol release. So those two hormones are, are directly, specifically attached to chiropractic in your spine. And people never think about that. All the science has been coming out the last couple couple decades and it's been showing that that's definitive so I wanted to put that out there too mental health matters yeah such an important point especially when I mean I think everybody can relate to that on some level and when you even just think about it from a surface perspective is that oh, okay yeah I'm stressed and I just feel like oh I am having brain fog and I'll hear that all the time and I'm then relaying that message back to the person saying, hey, this is something to pay attention to. This is a little bit more serious. It's not just, oh, I'm forgetful or I just, you know, had a lot of stress in my life and all oh, things are just this way. Those are things that if they're chronic and they're occurring over a long period of time in your life, they can have some serious and significant uh, consequences in your body. But we're here to say that we can reverse it, you know, we can do things to help um, you heal and we'll get to those points today too. So don't feel like we're, you know, all doom and gloom here today. We're going to get to the point where we're talking about what you can do to help your body heal. You know, that's a huge point too. It, the zero doom and gloom because the potential your body has to heal on its own when interference is removed and you can do it in an objective specific way, it's unbelievable what's possible. And a lot of people don't know that until they experience it, right? And it's done through a biochemical uh, nutrition is absolutely critical to that perspective and also spinal correction. I think there's so many things that we can meet on here and they overlap. We could talk for three more hours. Part of our challenge here is to bring it <laughs> to the center here and say, what's, what can we get across in 30 to 45 minutes that's, that, that's gonna be most action oriented and, and, and most impactful? Adjustments, even if I was nonspecific and I adjusted the spine on a regular basis, the research now has actually come out and showed that 
adjustments themselves, even if they're nonspecific, can reduce cortisol, increase dopamine, increase your body's ability to adapt and heal, lower adrenaline, lower, lower cortisol. That we think of the inflammatory response being the governing control center for all chronic disease, then we know that if we can reduce stress, we can reduce inflammation. The problem is the number one, you guys might've heard of this before, but the number one sign that people get when they have a heart attack is unfortunately death. It's the, it's the thing that just takes you out. You don't get any warning signs. What we do in our office is measure the sympathetic and autonomic nervous system a direct standpoint so that we can objectify what's going on and get ahead of the problem. And that's where things like thermography come in, which is the gold standard for measuring the spine and the nervous system's ability to adapt. Motion of the spine is critical because like I said before, 90% of nutrition to the brain comes from proper motion of the spine. So I said when I was opening my practice, let's get, how do we see the spine in motion? Well, it's done through video fluoroscopy, which is a very low radiation video motion x-ray that allows us to pinpoint where the problems are or the subluxations that are stopping your brain from releasing the proper hormones and allowing you not to adapt in the way that you feel and allow you to express the help that you were designed to do. Mm -hmm. And we put those two together and then everybody wins. The patient gets better, I feel more confident, I sleep better at night. And it's back to my mentor, Dr. Pierce, his whole view of the profession, staying up with the latest technology. I thought that was one of, yeah, I thought that was one of the coolest things in the first visit that I had with you and being able to actually see my body in motion. What is my spine doing as I'm folding forward, as I'm lifting my chin, what's happening to my neck um, and, you know, my chronic, you know, neck pain over and over and just seeing what wasn't moving. And then now to see how things have improved so greatly to the point where, you know, like I love the quote that you said before. I'm going to quote you about your brain bathing in your body's nutrients coming from the blood that's being delivered. And when you have neck, uh, when you have uh, interference here or a subluxation, as you're mentioning, <clears throat> that's a very important spot uh, in your body to make sure that there isn't that subluxation happening. Um, so to see those those real time motion uh, x-rays and scans that you do in your office is it's unbelievable. And if you've never experienced this before and you're working with someone who doesn't assess, who doesn't look at your body and measure what's going on on a regular basis, maybe it's time to make a switch. <laughs> you no, know, yeah, and, and beautiful. And thank you for saying so. I, I appreciate that. I, I always try to just kind of step back and remain ultimately humble is, is possible when it comes to this, because we're all kind of products of what we've learned and who, who we've interacted with in our life. Everybody shows up for a reason at the right time. And I just met the right mentors and had a huge experience in my own life when I was training for whole bodybuilding competitions when I was an undergrad, completely focused on those type of goals and had a massive injury and uh, had surgeries done to correct a, what they called the deviated septum in my nose, had three different uh, Note sprays in order to clear up what was going on. I couldn't take a deep breath for six months. And I finally met a, a doc who was a, a, a chiropractor and I didn't, and it, it absolutely blew my mind because they just said, hey, let's see what's going on in your nervous system. Let's see what's going on with your spine and let's not be uh, nonspecific about it. Let's objectify it. And they put me under fluoro, found that I had a massive T1 subluxation or misalignment when I came back in extension because I would put the bar right here as I was squatting three times a week. I'm, you know, I'm, or I can't, my, my legs were super skinny. If I was ever going to stand on a bodybuilding stage, I'd have to bring those up. The problem is squatting three times a week creates massive issues in that upper thoracic spine. So he adjusted me once. I got up off the table and had my first deep breath in the first in six months after getting surgery and having three nose sprays. And I'm like, that's that medical model that's there for a specific reason and it's phenomenal for certain cases but from a health standpoint and progressive and preventive standpoint it's not doing its full job and there's statistics behind that but that changed my life because they got down to the root cause of the issue which was those nerves being shut off my brain not communicating with my lungs my rest of my body and that's what creates the chronic stress so that's when i decided to change that whole trajectory of my life and go towards the neurological perspective and then how does that relate to the gut and how does that relate to your stress response? 
that's another yeah. question that we should probably delve into on the uh, on second uh, filming of this, if we could. Yeah, well, right I'm always putting that uh, a chapter two. Part. No, well, well then, first sure I just want to... Yeah. yeah, first, really quick before you go there, um, I just want to say that's an amazing story and something really, I, I hear a lot, people talk about seasonal allergies. Oh, Ashley, you know, I have, I feel like I have allergies all the time. This is not something to ignore. You could have a subluxation in the upper part of your thoracic spine. You could have uh, an imbalance in your gut. I talk about this too with the nutrition and the food that you're consuming can actually be a food intolerance that may be by dairy or by gluten and you have a constant sniffle or a constant nose drip and you just think it's allergies and it might not be that. So that was just a great example that you just, and actually I didn't know the depth of that story. So I'm glad you shared that. Um, yeah, that was a great example uh, to even just say that it may not be the back pain from shoveling. It may not be the neck pain that you're experiencing. It may not be um, other issues that seem very apparent or obvious to you. It could be other things like, hey, I'm just having some discomfort in my lower GI or I'm having cramps uh, or just, you know, just the discomfort or I'm having uh, seasonal allergies that could actually mean something more where you can actually have a solution to this problem. Yeah, it's spot on. And people, we just weren't educated in this way. So it's like you have to experience it and you have to go through it. And uh, without getting into all those discussions as to how we don't know about these things, Hey, let's just you know in, in, enjoy and go forth with the new information that we've gleaned, um, and that's absolutely critical. And you're right; it's it's all tied to the nervous system. I'm going to go ahead and screen uh, share with you, Ashley. Yep. I'm going to do Perfect. that here. Can you guys see this? Yep, we can see it perfectly. So if you want to actually go on and make it full screen for us, and we can see just your slide. Awesome! Great. Okay. I'm just going to go over a couple quick slides here. This is the talk I sometimes give, but I'm just going to go over this real quick here. So the problem with chiropractic, what you might have heard before, or what kind of might be incongruent in your mind, is that there is no real standard of care when it comes to our profession. So I like to use this slide as an example. Um, what's nice about medicine is that there is a standard of care. So if some patient comes in with a heart problem, we know that same patient is going to go to 10 cardiologists. They're going to have the same three diagnostic tests that are modern, they're the, they're the most up to date in technology, and they have the same treatment given. And those same results are going to be predictable and they're going to be achieved. What's missing in our profession here is that you take that same patient, you go to 10 different chiropractors, you have 10 different analyses and tests. Some of those will be from 1895 when the profession started, some of them will be new, but you're going to have 10 different specific opinions about where those subluxations are, and then 10 different adjustments. And the problem is you're gonna get different results, and then there's a lack of clarity. And then we can't share that information between professions. What we like to do is objectify those findings and allow us to be able to create a foundation of science so that anything we send is going to be 100% understood and then applied in a specific manner so that we can all communicate in terms of our profession. So this left side here is a normal cervical spine. Again, the reason the cervical spine is so critical to your overall health is because that's what governs and controls that direct communication to the brain. It's that closest area that allows your nervous system to give that blood flow and cerebral spinal fluid up to the brain and down through the sacrum and all the way out to your feet. This individual on the right came into us. He was our first personal injury case. He had been rear-ended by a school bus and entire life since then had been frankly in shambles, had to take medications just to go to sleep. He had to, um, you know, he was drinking alcohol, was having, uh, you know, opiates and, you know, was prescribed for the pain, couldn't lift his left arm. Terrible situation, father of four. You can see in the upper cervical spine there, I'm gonna go back, I'm sorry. He had a reversal. And normally, as you can see on the image on the right, you should have what's called a lordotic curve going towards the nose. And that angle up there, that 7.9 degrees, should be somewhere between 18 and 24 degrees. Mm -hmm. That tells us that brainstem is getting the proper blood flow it needs in order to regulate those hormones that we discussed before. So I'm going to come back to that. But thermography is something else that is the gold standard of saying, hey, how is that spine communicating with the brain? 
And that image on the right with those really deep blue colors up top and those deep red colors in the middle, shows that the nervous system's under a tremendous amount of stress and those bones are shifted out of alignment, causing pressure and irritation on those nerves. And that image on the right, with the, it's a thermography of checking for breast cancer. It's now a massively used non-invasive aspect of checking if there's any pathological process going on in the reproductive tissue, in women's breast tissue. And that's the first place it started because women were looking for an alternative to mammograms. And you can see there's a breast cancer forming because of that really heated up spot. Just like a PET scan, it's showing if there's glucose being taken up. That's showing if, if there's a pathological cell that's multiplying and it's non-invasive. We try to do this, well actually we do in our office every single visit to know if we're making a change for the better from a whole health perspective and not just trying to take away pain because that is so topical. But that's an example. The image on the left shows we did one adjustment up top and that real bad reversal I was mentioning on this previous slide here, where that arrow is, and this was the result. It was a couple of adjustments. It's only a month later, and he has, has a perfect correction of his cervical spine if you look back here. That's the kickstart of allowing that brain to get the communication it needs to regulate itself. You talk about a short-term correction, that's about bringing the technology in and taking the guesswork out of what we're doing. And if the brain is the most important organ in the body that's telling us how we feel and function, we got to pay extra special close attention to the spine to know how that's functioning, because that's giving a direct communication to the brain. This Connor, is a similar... Yep. Sorry, Connor, go back real quick. That's amazing. If you can look at those dates really quickly at the bottom, you're not even talking a full month here. This is just within, you know, three weeks. This is amazing. Yep. yep. Yeah, and thanks for saying so, Ashley. I mean, I wish our profession too. I mean, they do a great job. The reason our profession is the number one alternative healthcare option for people out there is because we get results. What I wish we could do a little bit better was prove it. And there's mm -hmm. three questions I always wish that healthcare providers could, could answer and also ask is, where's the problem, number one? Number two, can you correct it? clinically? Are you able to? Do you have the training? And then number three, can you prove it was corrected? Because in my opinion, that's everything. And that's what our patients should be demanding from our healthcare providers, whether it's blood work, whether it's a, a outcome assessment on your ability to move and function, or is it your nervous system in your mind? So this is just an example of that. And I, hum I humbly need to accept that and know that their body's changing when we provide the right input to remove that interference. And one, one more yep. thing too here, Connor, and, and I know because I know you very well as, as an incredibly honest person, but even for the people who are watching and, and don't know you, um, to look at this, you can see this is not made up, right? This is, you can see, this is the exact same person. Look at the teeth. The cavities are the same. The Adam's apple is the same. I mean, this is the same person. And then just the value in knowing that short three weeks that you can have that much correction and that much of a result is, is so powerful. So again, just wanted to point that out. Thanks for saying so, Ashley. Yeah. And it's, it's so cool. That's what I love to do on a regular basis is just show people exactly what's going on with them and then prove what we do by communicating. And the communication is everything. Communication, communication and connection is what we, we build it all on and what healthcare should be about because it is your greatest asset. We only get one body. We only get one brain. Every decision we make either brings us further or, or kind of takes away our health. And there's a few different ways to go about it, but I'm going to stay in my lane here. This is one other example I want to show here. This was a, a young cheerleader that we see in our office. She's 13 years old, heavily involved in cheerleading, gymnastics, came in with, with blurry vision on a constant basis, had neck pain, stiffness, headaches, upper cervical pain and back pains, and, and coccyx pain because she's constantly being thrown up in the air and has been falling and hasn't been sleeping. The middle aspect is another, as, is another example of the thermography that we do. And her pelvis here on the left what I'm looking at is saying, how are these lumbar vertebra moving? We know that those vertebra are directly affecting the reproductive organs and the digestive system, and also governing, controlling how her neck is moving while she's moving through space. Three office visits, and 
she's a teenager and, and the younger you are, the quicker the results we get. But when I sat down with her mom and we went through her history, we found out she was a C-section birth and had both her tonsils and adenoids remo removed. And also her first two scans were really blown out, which is showing her nervous systems under a tremendous amount of stress from birth, but also in the, in the demands that she's putting on her body on a regular basis. This was a two adjustment correction on the right side, and you can see there's so much more symmetry. On the left, her tailbone's being shoved over to the right, which is putting tremendous amount of stress on those lumbar vertebrae and where those nerves are going to regulate her digestive system, and then stop that communication to the brain. So that's those headaches. And this was the post scan where we see that line start to straighten out. And again, I show this to say the pelvis and the cervical spine are critical for allowing that electrical system to communicate with your chemical messenger, which regulates your hormones and how you feel. And if you've ever been a patient, you know that I always say, I want to number one, num know how are you functioning and then how are you feeling as a result? And it makes perfect biological plausibility that when your nervous system is moving and adapting accordingly, those hormones get released properly at the right time to allow you to heal not just for the short term, but create the most longevity in your life. But then what's most important is your health span or how, how much vitality and how much joy and fulfillment you experience in your life until you get to the end. Unfortunately, right now in our society, we spend most of our life savings toward this very couple years at the end of our life. It really isn't set up to nurture health and to give you that vitality that you should all seek and expect from our one life that we have. So there's a prevention aspect, there's a, there's, a, there's a support of what the body needs in order to fully maintain and correct itself. And that's what we go to work on every day. And this is another example. We see several chiropractors in our office. Actually, this was a chiropractor from Palatine who's been coming in uh, a couple times a month. And this was him on the left. He'd been specifically non-adjusted most of his life in school had terrible neck pain, low back pain, and uh, you know attention deficit disorders and migraine headaches. And on the right side, all those things started to dissipate and go down, especially the pain aspect. That's the fundamental stuff. Just from two adjustments, and we see his atlas angles up to normally. He's got that normal curve in his neck. And I just show it to say we take out the guesswork. I'm just going to show this one last thing. This is a little tiny example of the fluoroscopy. We can see it move, we can pinpoint where the problem is. And if I'm gonna put my mother, my grandmother, um, my grandfather who's got end-stage dementia, who I've adjusted down on the table, I wanna know specifically that we're not guessing and we're only gonna affect those areas that need to be adjusted so that you live the highest expression of your life and then also bring that lifespan and health span to its highest degree for our genetic potential. And this is a tiny little excerpt from a longer presentation I give, but I wanted just to show a couple of those just so you guys get what I was saying before. That's awesome, Connor. How is that in the image that's on the screen right now? What, what is going on in that neck um, specifically? Lack of motion in the yeah. C2? So anytime that I'm looking at a specific motion, I'm always looking for a couple things in the spine. And you can see that very upper part is the skull and it's coming down on that funny looking thing that's jutting out to the, to the back. That's the C1 vertebra and then C2 is the biggest vertebra on the spine. So normally when you bring your head back in extension, those three should be touching, those should be coming down. And if C2 is staying put and you're not getting any contact from C1, we know that there's a, a movement distortion, a physical distortion, and then a chemical issue there. So I would adjust octopus, which is the very top bone in the skull, which gives a complete, whenever you have an octopus problem, it causes issues a lot of times all the way down the chain. So the things I was talking about before, headaches, digestive issues, uh, lack of communication with the brain and the gut, from an immunological standpoint, actually, believe it or not, starts in that upper cervical region. So you give the body the most potential to adapt and heal when you correct that. So this was a C2 and extension adjustment we did. Uh, her name was Rachel. This actually did this in clinic. And within two weeks and two adjustments, 
all the things she came in with were corrected without adding anything else. And I think that's the key. You know, no added chemicals, no added surgeries, just correcting the body and allowing it to heal the way it was designed. But Amazing. with this specific little clip I took, that's what we're looking at. Amazing. Now, another thing real quick. You have time, Connor? I do, yes. Yes. Okay, so I have a uh, staff coming in right now, but we're, we're doing it. <laughs> just real quick here. So another thing that would be a most common question that I hear is, well, how often do I need to be seen? Um, you know, is this going to be, I've seen a chiropractor before and they make me come in three times a week and I have to go for six months straight, three times a week. Um, one of my past experiences and I was like, this is crazy. Who has time for this? <laughs> so can you yeah. just talk real quick to, um, I know everybody's going to be slightly different, but just talk to how you um, determine that for people. Yeah, that's a really good question. And the thing about it is if I'm going to go anywhere for three times a week, I better have a really good reason as to why. And if that's the case, I haven't seen anybody three times a week. There's a few, you know, most people come in twice a week for a couple of weeks in order to get that first initial correction. We usually expect about 60 to 80% correction in those first six visits. And then I want to see how you're doing. So the whole point is to objectify and be very specific about clinically, where can I get you to correction as efficiently as possible? And that just is where the technology comes in. It allows me to communicate and say, you only need this many visits as a minimum to correct things for the long term. I don't care about getting a, a, a quick fix because that is so short lived and you end up spending more time, more money, more headaches by doing aspirin chiropractic where it's a quick fix every now and then and it's, it's an arbitrary set of recommendations. So what I'd rather do, take everything into account in terms of your history, how old you are, what you're coming in with, what your main complaints are, put it all together. And we know through dozens and dozens, you know, hundreds of case studies ultimately about how the spine is going to react and adapt. And then we, we know that you're busy. So we keep that to the minimum. And most people actually get a much better result from less care, but done in the right way at the right bone at the right time, rather than trying to guess because we don't have any imaging or know really what's going on. So that's, a, that's kind of a wordy philosophical way of saying that being more efficient allows less demand on your schedule and more efficient correction for the long term. And everybody's different like that, but with app technology, you can actually communicate it from a scientific scientific perspective about what you need if the outcome we're looking for. Awesome. And just another great point to really wrap up everything that we've talked about today. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms that even Dr. Connor talked about today, or you or you and I are working one-on-one, -on -one, we're really trying to resolve your gut issues. And we've been putting in the time and making those changes and to get an even greater level of results. And you've been um, seen before, maybe in the past, but you haven't had this level of detail of care and treatment, this is a, a great chance to really reach out. And Connor, I'm going to put your information uh, within this video so they'll be able to get to see uh, your website link and I have any other information you'd like me to share, I'll put that up there. Um, so you can reach out to Dr. Connor, uh, reach out to the office, schedule your appointment and really get you started on living your best and your longest and most vibrant life today. And that's what's most important from a health perspective. So thanks so much for joining. This has been really, really great, very informative, educational here, and always a pleasure to, to have you up here. Thank you so much, Ashley. Seriously, um, really appreciate you asking me to come on and it means a ton coming from you. Thank you for being a resource for our patients as well. I know we can talk for three more hours about the the gut and what it means from a nutritional standpoint and how critical your biochemical health and your adaptation is maybe round two, but um, really appreciate yeah. that. And uh, let me know if I can do anything else and for you guys, but um, keep rocking, Ashley, proud of you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. And then if anybody has any questions, you can post them within this post. Um, Dr. Connor is in this group so he can see and respond if you tag him in it, um, Connor LaValle. And then um, I can also make sure the questions get to you as well, Connor. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and thanks for joining. Here, guys. Thank you, Ashley. Have a great day.